What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode three of Kiss Meets the Podcast. I'm Eli Clawson. I'm Ranton Young. I'm Chad. And this week we are going to rank and discuss the 80s albums, our least of favorite. Uh, of course, on the last episode, we did the 70s albums. And um, as always, want to thank everyone for all the support, the comments, whatnot. Um, since the last episode, we do now have a Facebook page and also a SoundCloud page. Uh, you can find us on those at Kiss Meets Podcast. There's no the in there. Um, please check them out. You know, help spread the word. And Chad, you, you've got some uh, cool stuff that came in the mail the other day too, don't you? Yes, I do. I have our stickers. Lots and lots of stickers. Purdy. There's very nice and glossy. <laughs> and can the people get one of those? Uh, they can notify either one of any of us. Um, I actually have them all right now. But I'm sending those out uh, on Monday, so Eli and Brighton will have some. Um, you can contact us on, via Facebook, or you can see us around town, or and I'm hoping to next weekend have some at the record stores in Fort Worth. Think about stuff, stuff out of there and pick up one. So. so hit us on any of the formats. You know, send us a private message if you need to on Facebook or YouTube. We'll get one out to you. So. Um, I guess we'll just go ahead and get into what this episode's about, and um, and then hit the trivia after that, and go from there. All right, sounds good. All right, so uh, are we gonna go? What me, you, Branton again? Yeah, let's just roll with it that way. It works good. All right, sounds good. First up, then, Hot in the Shade. Um, you know, there are a lot of good songs on here. You know, of course, Forever. Um, Somewhere between heaven and hell, rise to it. The main thing that gets me on this album, and the reason I ranked it as my least favorite, uh, basically it comes down to the production. The um, the overall mastering is just very quiet. It doesn't have that presence to it. Um, that's one thing that makes it hard to listen to. Uh, I remember the CD was the same way. Um, why they didn't remaster that one, I have no idea. And... As far as the new vinyl reissue, I was wondering if maybe they had fixed it on that, but I have a feeling they didn't because I haven't heard anyone talk about it. So that's really the main reason I chose that as my least favorite, but some good stuff on there. All right, Brenton, what do you got? Uh, this was Hot in the Shade, same. Um, I like this one because they still have their makeup on on this one. <laughs> Benny Vincent plays on it. <laughs> that was the best part. And since uh, I think Andy Williams produced this one, and, uh, I think there's a cover of Moon River on here. I'm oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking about some other podcast, I guess, maybe. Uh, this album is just a lot of filler. Uh, the singles were the best songs, I think. Um, I think it was right before they got their mojo back so to speak because revenge came after this is that right oh uh, uh, yeah and i don't know this album is just there's a lot of i like the songs because it's kiss but it's pretty some of the songs are like yeah and if, if i'm not mistaken more is pretty much just a bunch of demos anyway and yeah so that it, it's like they really didn't put a lot of effort into i wonder why that was <laughs> right i don't know if it was because they were torn so hard at the time, or maybe, you know, was, was Gene still sort of on that point where he wasn't as involved still at that point? And, and I don't know. Maybe there was pressure from the record label. I don't know. But. Well, and I uh, piggyback both y'all. So, uh, nice. same reasons. Uh, Holy production shit. wasn't that great. Um, I like the singles, but everything else I think is just kind of blur. So. Well, Armageddon's here. We all agreed on something right away. So. We might as well just end this now. <laughs> I always think it's good, I'm sure. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's almost like maybe the record label rushed them to put that out. Because it's almost like the band doesn't like that album either since they never bothered remastering it. And, you know, even with these reissues. And I don't know, that could be the thing. But. All right, so anyway, next up for me is Crazy Nights. Um, really, there's just not too much of a... Um, 
strong songs on here for me. I mean, the title track, you know, somewhere between heaven and hell, or nah, what am I thinking? That was on hot in the shade. Uh, reason to live is what I meant. And, um, turn on the night are probably my three songs on here. Everything else is just kind of sort of filler. You know, I can, I could listen to them, but not my favorite go-to songs. Um, and it's also, in my opinion, probably their most poppy record. So that's another thing that sort of turns me off on it. My next pick is Animal Eyes. Uh, whoa. Uh, it's a great album. Great follow-up to Lick It Up. But um, not as strong as Lick It Up, as far as I'm concerned. Um, of course, the singles, Heaven's on Fire, Thrills in the Night. Great songs. Mm -hmm. I've had enough. Into the fire, under the gun. They did under the gun on the uh, animalized that concert they did on uh, the uncensored on. Yes. It was, well, it was on MTV, but it was a video release. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good album. I used to listen to it all the time when it came out. It's not as good as my next pick. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my next one was the Elder. Wow. Um, it's one of those things. It's a concept album. Not a huge fan of concept albums necessarily. Um, got some good tracks off here, but uh, you know, again, we like all these records. It's just it's the rates a little bit lower than the other ones. Exactly. The, these lists could change, you know, next week if we needed to. Exactly. All right. Um, next up for me is Asylum. Now, this goes back to what I've said before, where. At one point, this probably would have been my least favorite, but after recent listens, it's, you know, a pretty damn good album. It's kind of heavy, actually, you know, for that era, but when it comes down to it, I absolutely hate this period as far as the costumes they wore, the clothing, and just the whole appearance of the band. It's like they were lost, and, um, you know, and you see the music videos, It's it doesn't really go with the music. In my opinion, it doesn't match it. But, I mean, there are some killer tracks. King of the Mountain, that's a killer intro. Um, of course, Tears Are Falling, you know, All Night, Who Wants to Be Lonely, you know. But like I say, it's a fairly heavy album after the more I keep listening to it recent. It really stands out more. All right. Well, my next pick is Crazy Nights. Uh, this album I really played a lot when it came out. Um, I don't know if I had it on vinyl. I think I might have had the actual, I think it was a cassette tape. But, a track. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> of course, the title track, Crazy Crazy Nights. Um, same thing that uh, Eli said, Reason to Live, Turn on the Night, or the videos, the singles. Mm -hmm. um, I like the whole album, though, really. Uh, all the Paul songs are really good. Gene has two songs, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, I fight, I fight hell to hold you my way. Uh, there's an acapella version of My Way out there on the internet. Really? Yeah, for that, yeah. which is no music. It's Paul doing just the boats by itself. Mm -hmm. That proves how strong his voice was at that time, and that's another thing I liked about it, his uh, vocal gymnastics on this one. So Very cool. I'll have to look that up. Mm -hmm. um, I piggybacked on him on that. It was Crazy Nights. Um, it's a good album, like you said, but there is some feel. I don't think every song is really good. The singles are pretty good off of it. And it is a little bit poppy for me. So. All right. Um, next up for me is the one that started out the 80s, Unmasked. Um, you know, again, I think that if you wanted to call any of the albums disco, I feel like this one is closer to it than Dynasty. Dynasty always gets that rap just because of one song. Um, but, you know, I've always loved this cover, you know, the coloring of it and the whole comic look. I've always loved looking at that when I was a little one. Um, I do like a lot of the songs on here, especially the ace tracks, you know, um, talk to me and two sides of the coin. Um, and then some other, you know, of course, Shandy is a big one. She's so European, all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, one with this, I mean. It's kind of funny, you know, because Anton Figg's the drummer on there, but that's like some of my favorite drumming on a Kiss album is on that album. <laughs> well, my next pick uh, is Asylum. Okay. Um, had this when it came out on vinyl. Uh, loved the album. I probably played this one 
more than I did some of the other ones I had in the 80s that I uh, had on vinyl or just had in general. Um, you know, MTV was big on playing their videos. They had, uh, was it three videos from this one? Mm -hmm. Of course, Tears of Falling was in constant rotation. Uh, you know, the outfits at the time, everyone sort of looked really goofy in the 80s. Uh, I didn't realize it. You know, you're living it. So to look back 20 plus years, he's like, uh, really? But yeah, the song does stand up, I'd say. Um, it's a strong Kiss album. Yeah, I mean, tear, Tears Were Falling, they were still playing that up, you know, to what, just a few years ago, basically. Um, still sounded pretty good, in my opinion. Uh, mine was the same, mine was The Asylum. Uh, again, really good album, I think. Uh, loved, like I said, loved the songs on there, like King of the Mountain, uh, Who Wants to Be Lonely. Uh, again, the clothing was just a little, uh, <laughs> over the top. <laughs> I had to take the glam thing a little too far. So. Yeah, the Golden Girls. Put some tracks on it. And the, <laughs> the actual cover is bad. It's just the the clothing. Yeah, the cover the cover is kind of reminiscent of like you know Dynasty and Creatures and. That's what I was thinking. It's something like that. But like I said, the uh, yeah. the red outfits and stuff were just a little too outlandish for me. And my like, CD has this. Does the album have that version? I don't have my album with me. Oh, uh, good question. I don't know if that's on the inner sleeve of the album. I can't look at mine. I don't. Yeah, it does. It has it on. Yeah, it's, it's... Oh, it's like different pictures. Okay, mine just has the full... Yeah, different layout. Yeah, that's cool. Is, your, is that a original press of the CD? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Because thought... it doesn't have the clear remasters. Yeah, yet. and then I noticed on the back the way that back cover yeah, looks. Yeah, it's... It. Uh... I kind of actually like that better than the way yeah. they did the reissue, or yeah. the remaster. In mind, I should have uh, pressing on this one. Oh, very nice. I don't have. I don't think I have hardly any um, imports when it comes to the '80s albums. Maybe um, one or two. I've got. I pretty much have all of it. Well, I have Lick It Up, uh, Asylum, Crazy Nights, and what else do I have? I think I have one more. that's they're Netherlands. I got from uh, a fellow VC member who lived over in uh, Sweden. So. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you about that. Huh. You get a lot from one place. It's like, that's odd. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, from Sarah over at Sarah's Record Shelves. From oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And congratulations to her. She just recently had a kid. She did. Mm -hmm. And um, as you're Lick It Up, is it the, is it, what, a Swedish version or? Uh, it is. Or the Mexican it's the makeup cover. <laughs> it's the, you know what? This one that I have right here is just going to be the American version. I think I've got the Netherlands version also of it. Okay. I would like to find, I'm pretty sure it's the Mexican version. It has the the logo on the front's pink. That's really kind oh, okay. of, that's, yeah. that's really kind of the only difference, but it's still just, you know, it's. That'd so, be cool to find. Right. It's a, it's a different, you know, variant, so you got to have it. <laughs> oh, I was also I have a copy of, uh, our name is uh, one of their records, and it was a Mexican version. It's actually in Spanish. Oh, nice. I was uh, recently, um, someone was showing some videos there up in Canada, and a lot of the can uh, Canadian pressing has the little rake in the corner. Oh. You guys heard that? That's the first I heard about that. that <laughs> is, yeah, that is true, now that I think about it. And then they were on a lot of, or actually a lot of the UK is what I'm thinking. They were on that PYE. P -Y -E label and uh, there was a lot of the red what was it red vinyl pressings of those and from what i understand a lot of that's being bootleg now these days so now it's like you got to watch out what yeah. you're buying when some of those bootlegs look i mean legit you have to be really careful it's hard yes. to tell from the real from the, the bootleg i fell forward on sonic boom man it's i mean it's a good listenable copy even though it's not the legit thing but right yeah I, I fell for it. <laughs> All right, so my next pick is Animal Alliance. And, um, you know, again, this is kind of where I started with Kiss, basically. So, you know, it kind of takes me back to my childhood every time I hear Heaven's on Fire, especially. Um, I mean, of course, seeing the Animal Alliance concert that was on MTV, and, you know, one of the, I think that was the first time I ever saw Kiss you know, in video form. Um, but like I say, Heaven's on Fire, 
uh, Thrills in the Night. Love the solo on that. That's one of my favorite Bruce, Bruce Kulick solos of any song he's played on. And uh, Under the Gun, those are probably my three favorites there. But uh, very cool. And I, I do have a, uh, you know, the, the old school, when you went to the fair, those old school mirror, glass mirror things. I have I have one. It's this back cover. Yeah, I like that. Oh, cool. <laughs> I have one. It's this picture from the back covers, and I've had it since probably you know the eighties, and I, it's still in my collection. But uh, so the uh, next one I have is look it up. Ooh. Um, another strong album from from them. Like they had like three or four strong albums in a row. Uh, from Creatures of the Night all the way up through, uh, well, through Asylum at least, and then uh, Lick It Up, with every, I like every song, even the cheesy ones, even mm -hmm. the Gene ones. Mm -hmm. At the time, once again, I didn't think anything about it being that cheesy. Uh, to look back at it, I like him for that reason. Um, but yeah, every song on here, I mean, there's so many good songs. Of course, the singles, Lick It Up, All Hell's Breaking Loose, Me Into One, my favorite Paul Stanley song. One of my favorites. Uh, Fits Like a Glove, Not for the Innocent, Young and Wasted. Uh, every song on here, very good album. Yes. Um, I have no complaints with them taking makeup off if they're going to sound like this. Although that really didn't have anything to do with it. Right. I think right. they they had this agenda that, you know, we got to make sure that we could prove that, you know, we're, we're still a band without makeup and costumes. Just like they did with The Elder. They were trying to prove that with makeup they could be... Uh, you know, musically good. Exactly. So they were doing the opposite with Lick It Up. Yeah, a whole concept album. and <laughs> Yeah. Uh, mine was Lick It Up also. Um, Damn. Again, I agree. I mean, the one is a fantastic song. Um, I really like the opening track, Insider. I don't know. I mean, it's a yeah. the album. Um, uh, Lick It Up is a good song, and I really like Young and Wasted. Yes. So, uh, Really, the whole album, like I said, like Branton also said, it's a real strong album. Pretty good, I think. And it was, uh, it proved they could do it without the makeup, too. Exactly. All right, next up for me is Elder. And, um, you know, again, this album has grown on me over the years, as it has with the Kiss Army. But, you know, again, at one point, that probably would have been my least favorite or right there next to it. But, um,. You know, there's some songs on there I really love. Again, you know, the, all the Ace tracks, you know, Dark Light, and um, and then the Gene song, Mr. Blackwell, that's one of my favorite songs, period, from Kiss. Love the, I love all the, just the little undertones that are added to that song, like the sounds he's making on the strings and whatnot, like just those little things are what catches me. Um, of, course, of course, the Oath, you know, that's a, you know, staple. They play it all the time in those you know, special shows, I guess you would call them. Um, but yeah, just, it's definitely grown on me over the years. And, you know, I used to, one reason I kind of didn't like it was the production quality and the mastering and mainly the drums. Cause that's kind of what I always tend to focus on when I listen to music is drums. And it almost sounded like they just laid a mic in the kick and didn't do any EQing to it or anything. But now, that's kind of what I like about it is it kind of has that raw, almost like, you know, DIY type sound to it. You know, just it kind of gives it that extra uh, layer, I think. Right. And, you know, that was one of the last kids records I got into just for the fact that I was so used to them all. When you thumb through the bin of records with the makeup and everything, and mm -hmm. that was such a plain cover, you know, I was like, oh, you know, I don't know. But it really was a good album. <laughs> Yeah, I used to always get confused because I remember my uncle had this album back, you know, in the day, and every time I'd see that one, I'm like, "What? Like, were they in makeup in this album or not? <laughs> like, I don't know." Like, <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of uh, uh, demos from the Elder that's on online, a lot of instrumental versions of a lot of the songs. That uh, there's one song on there that's like it's several different versions of uh, "World Without Heroes." Yeah. There's instrumental versions, and then there's one with Paul doing like their real faint vocals. And the song I think was supposed to call uh, be called "I Want You Only." Okay. And I love that version. You know that that version could have been. You know, I wish they would redo the Elder as mm -hmm. a deluxe edition and put like a second disc of all of those on there. 
Mm-hmm. Very cool. They that should was, do that with all their albums, really. Yeah, because I really yeah. liked the demo of Dark Light, you know, Don't yeah. Run. It was right. a whole different song, different lyrics, and I mean, it was actually a little bit slowed down, too, now that I think about it. And I, I like that version. It's this, mm-hmm. you know, I would, I, just like you said, I, I would love to get some more officially released demos, you know, better better quality than what's out there. Because I'm, I'm convinced they exist somewhere, just like with the footage, like we talked about in one of the last episodes. But maybe they'll release some of that stuff once they, once they get to the point where they're not charting like they do and not putting out the new albums, and they'll start redoing yeah. some of the, some of the classics stuff, and you making them a double CD with the demos and the, you know, yeah, because the a lot of bands doing that. I could definitely see that happening, man. Because yeah, once they're done for good, and you know to kind of give our, all the fans like, I don't know, sort of like a pacifier, if you want to say, right. to feel better. It's like, then they start putting out all this stuff that everyone's been wanting all these years. And that would be cool. I mean, I would be happy with that. Oh, it, I would too. Even though, you know, it'd be a good, I guess, meeting the halfway, you know, with the band not playing anymore, but we would finally start getting, you know, like an official release of Wicked Lester and whatnot. I would, you know, do that. And you think they would have already done that by now on the Wicked Lester thing. I mean, that's been, you know, 40 years down the line. You'd think they would have gone ahead and put up a little something or I think it's, added it to something kind of that, you know, I don't know. I mean, I feel like Gene and Paul just kind of disown that nowadays. I don't I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but it's just – and I, I think it's great music. And, and I've always said that a lot of these people that don't like Kiss, I think if they heard the Wicked Lester – they would get a different opinion because that stuff's more, it's like right on the verge of psych at times. Yeah. Well, I was really surprised that a couple of those tracks showed up on the box set. Yeah, true. I say, I've got you a know, couple of my box set that, have. that they sort of try to wipe it off. I mean, they do mention it. Oh, we started out as Wicked Lester and mm-hmm. like some of the documentaries and stuff. But the fact that they're on the box set was a surprise, I thought. Yeah. But, the version of she is it's a great version of she oh i agree that's and i think there was what two versions of that that they did in wicked luster and um that was a great version you know love her all i can that was a good version my one of my favorite tracks on that whole wicked luster is sweet ophelia sweet ophelia yeah love love that version um that's a song i kind of well i i could see where it wouldn't have worked with kiss but it's kind of like when they do all these acoustic shows, I would love to see them do that. It's That'd funny awesome. that, you know, they've they've done all these other albums, you know, they went through different styles and and everything throughout the years. So, you know, they do something like The Elder, and I'm not bashing The Elder because I love that album. Yeah. That's so far removed from the original idea of Kiss, so why would Wicked Less be any, any worse or any different, you know? Right, exactly. But, well, it's where they came from, too, so, I mean, you know, you're going to go... Right. From- it's just the kind of past that it's just, you know, deal with, it, the evolution of that turned into Kiss. So, Who knows, maybe when the final show comes, they will, they'll pull out some of those songs. Maybe they'll even bring up some of the guys that were in the band, for all we know, just as a, you know, cover all the bases, basically. Never know, that'd be nice. Yeah. Be very cool, actually. But. Well, I'm down to my top three, then. Um, I got two left. Okay. Well, this this gets really hard for me at the oh last. yeah because unmask. Did you do yours already? Yeah, because I showed Elder, so I forgot. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking you guys had already. Went. Yeah. So unmasked, another album. Okay. Love every track on it. Oh yeah. Uh, it's really poppy, really polished. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've heard some people say that the production's not that good on here. I think it sounds really crisp. One hundred percent agree. Yeah, I mean, I would love to hear all these songs in the original version. We have one song on the box set, mm-hmm. which I think was the demo version of uh, "You're All That I Want." Is that right? Uh, yeah, I think so. And um, so it sounded quite a bit different, you know. I mean, the lyrics and all that's the same, but but this album, you know, uh, Shandy, great song, probably the most syrupy uh, they've ever got, aside from Beth. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least as far as uh, the earlier versions of Kiss. Um, but Ace has a ton of songs on here. Um, and Gene's Naked City 
you know, that's a great song. Yes. Piece of European is another great song. Yes. Sort of pokey in the lyrics a little bit, but that's Gene for you. Yes. This album was really, I think it's underrated. It really is a great Kiss album. Yeah, and like you said, touching on the overall sound quality, it's one of my favorite sounding Kiss albums, period. I mean, Anton Figg's a great drummer, you know, what he did on that and Dynasty and, you know, all the stuff he's done in his career, but totally agree on that. And mine was the same thing was uh, Ed Mass. All right. This is one of those that, uh, for a long time, I just kind of, I mean, I played it, but didn't really, I don't know, didn't really absorb it, I guess. And so recently I've been listening to it quite a bit, and uh, I've got it on the vinyl, and then I have it on my iPod, which I play quite a bit. And, uh, you know, Is That You? I'm a big fan of that, and a big fan of Shandy, and She's So European. But <laughs> really, truly, all the songs are good. I, I was just thinking about the music video for Shandy, how funny, because Peter's in it. Yeah. And it's and like, on the album. <laughs> it's like, we all know you're not on the album, dude. <laughs> yeah. and have, you, have you guys heard the um, the audition from that Eric Carr did where he was singing yeah. Shandy? That's, yeah. He did a good job on that. It's very unusual. He, he at times, sounds a lot like Paul. Have on, you heard the that. version of him and Paul together doing it? Yes. Yes, I haven't I mean, heard that. To check that one out. It's close at times. You gotta like. Sometimes you're like, wait, who's singing? Because <laughs> Eric, could, Eric could get close on. You know, I I'd like to hear a lot more of those demos because I haven't really heard a lot of those demos from that album. Yes. Uh, the song "Is That You" was done by um. I can't think of the guy's name. I have it on my iPod. The original version. Look that up and listen to it. Okay. Um, because it's a cover version basically of, right. of, of that artist I can't think of right now. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a cover. Hmm. I think it might it might be written by that guy. I don't know if there's credits on the album. Um it says Gerald Mc McMahon. Yeah, that's him. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's Hmm. I only, I thought they only had like three cover songs and now now it's four. <laughs> Well, five if you count New York Groove, but oh uh, yeah, That's... but as a band, but so yours was unmasked too. All right, yep. All right, uh, next up for me, number two, uh, lick it up. Um, you know, touching back a little bit earlier when you showed this earlier, Young and Wasted is my absolute favorite. 80s Kiss song period. Oh, it's awesome. Um, it's definitely right up there in my top 10 favorite Kiss songs of all time. Gene's vocals on it are, it's perfect, man. He's aggressive. It's in your face. Um, it's, you know, the perfect sounding song. You know, you think of 1983 hard rock metal. That's a good song. And, you know, even for whatever reason, when Eric would sing it live, Eric Carr, he started singing it live and, the way he sang it was great too. I mean, you know, you watch watch that Animalize concert again. Yeah. You know, he sings it on there. It's, um, but I agree. You know, Exciter, killer opening. You know, the title track, of course, doesn't need to be mentioned. All hell's breaking loose. Fits like a glove. All right, number two for me is The Elder. All right. Uh, you know, I just can't get enough of this album because it was a mystery to me for so many years. Uh, when it first was reissued or first came out on CD in the 90s sometime, it sounded like crap. It hadn't been remastered and done the right way. Uh, but then when the remasters th come out in 98, I think it was, you know, they redid it, put it in the correct sequence. Uh, they had the chanting in between the songs. Everything was right. It sounded really crisp and really clear. Um, so that was my real experience of, of hearing it for the first time the right way. And... You know, it's an album that at times you almost forget that it's Kiss mm -hmm. because right. it's so far removed from, I mean, a lot of tracks on there. It has the choirs and all that stuff. And to me, that adds to it. But I think it's because I like so many different kinds of music. And this is so many different kinds of music under the Kiss banner. I mean, that's the only album you're going to get like mm -hmm. that from Kiss. Right. Right. I don't know what it is, but the CD, the way they made that CD look, I've always loved that. The, just the yellow and the black, just something about that mm -hmm. with the logo and everything. I've always loved how that looks. Yeah. All right. My next one was uh, Creatures of the Night. Oh, shit. I think it's a fantastic album. Um, it's really heavy for a Kiss album, I think. Uh, great songs on here. 
Of course, Creatures of the Night. I'm a huge War Machine fan. Oh, yeah. that song. Killer, uh, killer. The drums on this, I mean, well, it's fantastic. I mean, he beats those things to death. So, uh, just a fantastic album all the way around. So. Not the song killer. I meant War Machine's killer. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, my number one and piggybacking on you, Creatures. Um, love, you know, love it. Um, you know, I kind of... I, I could remember, you know, another childhood memory, uh, going to the library with my dad, and it, you know, it had, it had to be when the album was still fairly new, because I'm, as far as I can remember, and you know, they always kept the albums in those, you know, thick plastic sleeves to protect them, and I, I still remember the smell of that plastic, you know, and <laughs> um, and of course, you know, I, I love the color blue, and I, that's one thing that's always appealed to me with this cover and just the image and um, you know everything down to the label on the record just love how the logo looks on the record and um, you know it's one of my favorite areas of kiss period um, you know especially the costumes um, <laughs> Branton's favorite piece of course the cod piece <laughs> absolutely <laughs> but I don't know I mean I really I really like Gene's costume in that era it's one of my favorite of all of his and uh you know the, the i love it loud video just oh oh man sure that was my, a classic i still love that video favorite music video they ever put out just everything the whole look of it and everything so um but again yeah war machine killer track and uh saint and center has become right about my favorite song off the album right now i, I, I love gene's vocals on that too the you know the harmony of it and everything so and, i agree Fantastic album. Yes. My number one is uh, Aaron Carter. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Uh, Wrong podcast. With the Creatures of the Night. And that comes with a DVR, correct? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, Creatures of the Night, you know. Oh, yeah. It's the best Kiss album, in my opinion. Uh, it's the really the most metal album. Um, and, and if you've noticed, in the interviews and the pictures and stuff, you see... There was a lot of religious uh, people going against Kiss at this time. Oh yeah, that was in yeah. the early '80s. You know, you had a lot of that satanic panic type stuff, mm. and uh, you know they were uh, Gene Satan service. Uh, yeah, and Gene looked really evil. You know, in a lot of the concert footage, the interviews, he was just like right on that demon character. I mean, uh, his makeup was a little bit less around his eyes. I don't that's, know. If that was that, intentional I, or. I think that's one thing I like about it because I feel like the bat wings, he made them yeah. more pointy and thinner. And I just, there's something about the way it looks. And it's with, like that was the last of the makeup era at the time. And that was the, that was when Gene was the most evil. If yeah. You to it that way, I think. I, th uh, I, th I think they came back, especially Gene, with a punch to the face, you know, because you look at Dynasty and Unmasked, what he was wearing. And then, of course, El of course Elder. And then to bounce back, and they're looking like that, and him, yeah. it's like, that was just, it was it, man. Like, Yeah, and every song is good. Um, War Machine, you know, that's yeah. still play that live currently. Uh, three songs, actually, in the current tour from this album. Uh, and the I Love It Loud video is the same thing. It's like yeah. the best video. And I think that's the best that Eric Carr ever looked in the band. I know he didn't wear the makeup for the long period of time, but... He looked the best, and and you know at that in that video, I love it loud. It's just that's ingrained in my mind. Yeah, I mean, and, and at the end where they have the glowing eyes, like the album cover, yeah, and the fog and stuff. I mean, I used to watch that on MTV once in a while. You'd see it real late at night, and it's like I just that was like Kiss on TV, really. <laughs> exactly, and I mean, you know, Eric's drums on there were they influenced a lot of the heavy metal and hard rock drummers at the time. Everybody was trying to replicate, you know, the kick drum sound mainly, you know, and I love it loud. You know, most notably, it was just that boom to it. It's like no one could get it. You know, Tommy Lee tried his heart out, but he couldn't get it. And, you know, that, that just, that just says a lot right there. And, you know, creatures, it's right up there with my favorite kiss album of all time, let alone of the eighties, you know, that and Destroyer, man, it's neck and neck. It's kind of hard if I had to, if we had to do that kind of list, but <laughs> that would be real tough. 
And also, uh, the death metal band Six Feet Under did a cover of War Machine. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's um, right. It's a little rough sounding, but it's still heavy. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, By the way, um, Ace Freely covered Rock and Roll Hell on his new Origins uh, CD. True, yeah. Didn't it's it's true. very unusual. For him to do that yeah that was kind of it was like, almost like here's how it should have sounded yeah where does that come from yeah like, he also did hide your heart at one time right around the time kiss was yeah uh, had that as yeah. the same which there's no correlation probably it's just probably a coincidence mm -hmm. but it's sort of weird and i was going to say that um rock and roll hell is a cover song <laughs> no it's not it is molly hatchet seriously Pretty sure. Are you serious? Holy sure. shit. We might need to fact check that one. Pretty sure. I could be wrong, but I know <laughs> it's, been, it's been done by two other bands before Kiss. Wow. Hatchet being one, I can't think of the other one right off. See, we started the mm -hmm. podcast. I, I thought it was three covers all this all these years. Now it's up to, what, six? <laughs> all of a sudden. Yeah. Plus, you got, you got then, then She Kissed Me. Yeah. Any Way You Want It. Yeah. Uh, and you got King of the Nighttime World. Well, see, I didn't. That's I a good song. No, it way. was done by Kim Fowley and the Stars, or something like that, originally. Because see, the I was thinking of the first. Kim two. Fowley gave that song to Kiss to do. Holy shit! I think shit. I've read that before. What and then, of course, New York Groove. Uh, God gave rock and roll to you. Yeah. yeah. And I think that was per, well, two thousand man. Kiss in time. Yeah, I completely wasn't <laughs> thinking about that. So yeah, there was more. We could do a whole podcast on just the cover songs they've done. Hey. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's a, that's a, that could be an idea. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Uh, um, my number one pick was Animalize. Oh uh, yeah. Um, again, it's one of those things. This is the first Kiss album I really got into. Uh, had it on cassette, loved it, played it all the time. Um, again, like all the songs on here, uh, Heaven's on Fire is my favorite. Um, I like it. Under the Gun. Uh, I mean, what do you say? They're all good. So it's just one of those albums that uh, so many good memories listening to it. Set and it's just uh, it's not that it's a fantastic album. It's just that it's really good and it's just a lot of good memories. So that's kind of made it number one. The only one with Mark St. John. That's right. Who didn't last very long. <laughs> no. Did he? Did he entirely play on that album? Uh, I, think Bruce, I think Bruce Kulick might have played on it. That's or what I'm Bob thinking. Kulick. Which album? No, it was it. Maybe I'm jumping back to Creatures. Rick Derringer played on some stuff. Um, I have heard that, but I can't remember which album it was. Maybe it was Creatures, if I'm not mistaken. I don't. I might. I may be wrong. Someone well, tell us. I think Brian Adams wrote yeah. a song for Creatures of the Night. Wasn't it uh, Rider? Was it War Machine? I think it might have been War Machine. And and then with Elder, Lou Reed helped Lou Reed. World, World yeah. Without Heroes, correct? Yeah, and then Michael Bolton helped write Forever. Yeah. But yeah. see, there's that, there's that intertwining because he was in that group with Bruce Blackjack. Right. So, and then Vinny helped write some of the songs in on revenge mm -hmm. you know tommy played pretty much the whole psycho circus album except for into the void and a couple other tracks mm -hmm. so yeah, i'm saying vinnie vincent did several tracks and it looks like one two at least two that were on creatures mm -hmm. three three songs he wrote mm. and then of course bob kulik did everything on the alive two you know, the new tracks, except for one song, I think. Maybe that was the one Derringer played on was some of it, those. It might have been. Someone tell us down in the comments, because yeah. I yeah. can't think of it right now. So that was all of our uh, list. Um, you know, d some agreements, some disagreements, as always. That's uh, what makes fun, so... Let, let us know in the comments. Um, hey, give us your list of your favorite 80s albums in the order. We'd love to see, you know, what kind of differences or uh, similarities there might be out there. 
Um, so I guess now uh, we'll just go ahead and jump over to trivia. All right. So it'll be uh, uh, me and Eli and Brandon will be reading the questions. All right. Yep. <laughs> It's just off the top of my head. And I'm not sure how many right off. I think I know the answer, but you guys can just answer it from... Okay. Is this, is this just like a practice question? Or? No, I mean, oh. you'll know when you answer it if it's uh, right or wrong. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, how many albums did Bob Ezrin produce for Kiss? And what one. were they? Mm. Three? I, or is it, I think it's four. Is it four? I want to say it's three. Three? Okay. Destroyer. But, Elder. And, and, my, and... Revenge? Is that correct? I want to say revenge, but I'm not positive. About see, I didn't think it was revenge, but maybe. Uh, let's see. I think it was because he screwed up on the elder, so to speak, in their words. So they got him back for revenge to see if he could make up for it. Yeah, Bob Ezrin produced oh, okay. revenge. So was Destroyer and Elder the other? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, Eli's got a point. All right. Um, what uh, band, popular band now, or for years, um, did Gene Simmons discover? Van Halen. That's it. Yep. Have you guys heard the uh, demo that he recorded of them? No, I would like to. I have that digitally. I can uh, really get yeah. it to you. It's called it's called Zero, but it's it's really good. How many of those did he do? Was it like a full album's worth of demos, or it's? I want to say there's these seven songs. Um, it had, she's the woman. It's you know the original version that they redid on the newest album, of course. Um, but it's, it's really cool because you know a lot of those songs are different. When just the so it's Van Halen songs. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. It's, all, it's all the Van. It's all Van it's the you know they're. It's like they're raw and they're laid out different from what they are on the album. It's, so it's really cool to hear it all. That sounds cool. I'll have to get that to you guys. All right. Here's a, this is a hard question. I mean, I could probably get some of these answers, but maybe not all. It's, it's sort of Kiss related. Um, Eddie Kramer, you know, produced a lot of uh, Kiss, early Kiss stuff, uh -huh. or just in general. Um, what was some of the other bands that he was known for working with before Kiss? Uh, Jimi Hendrix. MC5. Hendrix was one. Was MC5 not one? Uh, it doesn't list it here, oh. but um, you know how that is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how many are you looking for? Uh, well, here they have like four or five. Hmm. Hendrix. Do you do the Stooges? It doesn't say them. No. Oh, okay. I'm on a punk rock thing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Didn't he do? Uh, did he? Did he do the Who? Doesn't say the Who. Or, uh, Cream was it? Cream? Doesn't say them either. Oh. You're, you're close though. Cream is fairly close. I mean, I think it is. Was it? Um, Blind Faith. You're really close now. <laughs> Eric Clapton. <laughs> uh, no, you're getting farther away. But Blind Faith was a really close guest to the band. One of the bands. Yeah. One of the guys that was in Blind Faith was in the one of these bands. Oh, uh, Spencer Davis Group? You're real close on the other side. Uh, <laughs> There's um, another band that those that same guy was in that was in those two bands. What the hell other band was he in? I'm trying to think now. To um, think really good band. One, he had some hits in the 80s, too. Well, I know who it is. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Steve <laughs> Steve Winwood. Um, that's it. Oh, okay. So what was the it. band? What was the band? I right. was thinking. Um, well, I'm trying to think of what other band he was in besides Spencer Davis Group and Blind Faith and. You got me on that one. I'm. Wasn't a yard? Sure. Wasn't a Yardsbirds? Was it? 
Is that what I, you're, I, that's Jimmy Page you're thinking? Yeah, of. I, I, I knew. But that might be something to do with one of the other bands. Um, man, what other band was Winwood in that I am not thinking of? Did you produce any? Are doing something for Led Zeppelin? Led Zeppelin's one. Oh, ah, okay. okay. <clears throat> so, Crap, I don't know now. I'm in this list here, there's uh, like three other, the one we're trying to think of here, and then there's uh, two others. Of course, I'm sure he's worked with numerous, numerous people. I think we're both going to have to take the forfeit on that. And yeah, I don't know. I'm well, it says here, uh, <clears throat> traffic was the other. Traffic. Ah. How can I? And also see? the Beatles. He worked with the Beatles. See, I was thinking that, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. I couldn't. And then Lynn Christopher. Ah, okay, makes I sense. <laughs> you should. Yeah. I guess. Paul Stanley did some vocals on. I think Paul and Gene both. Did Paul, it, it was their first appearance on an album. Oh, they, they were doing wow. background vocals. So do we each get a half a point for that? So we each got one. I I wouldn't even give us any points. I'd say just okay. move on. Okay. To, okay. I can't see. I knew Traffic. It was going to be something I knew, and then I wasn't complete. I love Traffic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good band. Dear Mr. Fantasy. Oh man. I don't know if this is an actual, if there's an answer to this question. Well, we won't know until you ask. Well, see, it's yeah. a visual. <laughs> It'd be a visual answer. Oh, okay. so we're doing some Jeopardy here. Okay. So it'd have to be visual. You guys don't have the visual to go with it. So how are you going to answer? I'm how not you, a cod piece. How, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, do, how, do you know, how do you know we don't have the visual? I, I don't. I have this. Want, um, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, well, I was going to ask you, you can edit this out or whatever you want to do. Um, okay, go for it. What was the original album cover supposed to look like for Carnival of Souls? It was a um, kind of like a like a drawing of a guy with his head kind of ripped open, if I'm not mistaken, or something to that effect. Yeah, like he had get his hand around his neck. Yeah, yeah. Like names coming out of his head or something? Because the unofficial yeah. picture disc that used to be around have that on it as the cover. And wasn't it called going to be called something else, or was that that other one we were talking about? It was called Head. Was that the name of the album? Well, that was, I don't, 100% if that's what they were going to call it, but I know the unofficial picture discs that were floating around for years, uh -huh. that's what it was titled. So, well, What was the one we were talking about that uh, Who Dares Wins? What album <clears throat> Uh, that was Crazy Nights, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So I don't know if that's a question or not. If you want to use, you can edit it out if not. Nah, I don't think it is. But... Okay. Because it's not really a fair question when you can't <laughs> show a picture. What? Or I should say, where was Kiss Alive Two recorded? Los Angeles. More specific. Uh, the LA Forum. There you go. Yeah. And that was edited from one show or two? I believe it was two. I think it was two. And then, yeah. of course, the studio stuff was done. I'm not sure right now, off the top of my head, where, but. Kiss World. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I have to keep in mind that there's people watching. So I don't want to just ask something really stupid as like, well, you know, how do you spell kiss <laughs> you know, or something? I want it to be sort of like a worthwhile question. Yeah, it says um, it was mixed at Electric Lady Studio, so I'm assuming that's where they recorded those studio tracks. And it was produced by Eddie Kramer. Awesome. I think Eddie Kramer should have produced all the Kiss albums. I agree. I just yeah. love the sound that he gets out of them. I think he's the best one for the job. I mean, Bob Ezrin's great. Yeah. But. Yeah. And, you know, this could be, this is jumping off subject for a second. It could be a whole different discussion in another show, but they need to bring back Eddie or Bob instead of Paul doing the self producing. I agree. I agree. Mark, I agree. Know, no offense to Paul, but I just feel like it, it would help. Well, it's the same situation because Tommy and Eric were fans first. Mm -hmm. So now they have the perspective of we're in KISS, this is what the fans would like. Same thing with the different producer. 
this is what you guys are and this is what you guys should sound like. You know, Paul being in the band and not, I mean, I'm not saying he's not a fan of his own band, but, you know, he doesn't have that perspective from an outside point of view. Exactly. So a producer could do that. And it, you know, it goes back to the whole thing of be the musician and don't try to do the producing and stuff too because it's just, it, it gets to be yeah. too much. It doesn't actually say here what I was looking for. As far as the, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm surprised I am still awake. The magic of editing. Yeah, thank God for that. Luckily, there won't be much in this episode. Yeah. Well, um, I'll just say this, because once you guys say the answer, I'm going to know if it's right or wrong. <laughs> um, when KISS originally recorded KISS Alive 4, hmm. that idea was scrapped uh, for KISS Symphony. Why was that? Why was it scrapped? Mm, was it was it something to do with the overall recording quality or something they weren't happy with? Yeah. Well, is that or is that not the Millennium Concert? Yes, it is. Okay. It was the one Vancouver New Year's Eve. Actually, it's um, one of the videos that is on bootleg. So the sound of that sounds good, in your opinion? Of the album? Mm -hmm. mm, no, I when I listen to it, I'm like, definitely not the best live recording. Yeah. So was you think that was? I mean, that's the reason that it was scrapped. Is that what we've read? What we've heard? I I'm I'm just guessing. Um, yeah, because I don't I don't know for sure. I've I, heard a lot of different things, but yeah, I don't recall hearing a reason. I'm just taking an educated guess. So yeah. maybe this question doesn't really count either. I don't know. Right. I was just curious about that too because I I never really had a confirmed reason. Uh, you know, if they had the opportunity to perform with a symphony, and they already had a live four recorded as going to be a release, you know, it's like, oh well, let's just forget that. Let's just do the symphony and call it a live four. It doesn't even seem like they would have done that because they were so close to having you know it already done. You think they would have went ahead and released it too, and then. Kiss Symphony would have been like just something separate, like Kiss Rock Vegas is something separate. Yeah, because b back when the uh, box set came out, they included Rock and Roll All Night from that concert, mm -hmm. just as like a little teaser, like, oh, you know. But right. I I'm just assuming maybe that's the reason, or maybe it's because Ace was on his way out, so they, they, they was like, why put out a live album with right. him on it when he's about to not be in the band anyway? Could have been that, yeah. I, I, I would really like to know. Yeah. Good question. All right, here's here's one. This is a this is sort of uh, this is a two part answer. Okay. And it's from two separate eras in Kiss, um, where the same instance happened. Um, what two concerts, or actually one was a concert, one was a special appearance. What were the two that Ace did not? perform or show up for these two oh uh, as far as something that was documented the uh, what show was that was it friday one was, fridays one was in the 80s fridays and one was in during the before he left the last time it was, was it fridays was the show it was no, it was on fridays so it was um what the hell one was that then Man, I don't even know this one. <laughs> solid, solid gold. No, he was on that too. Um, oh, was it the uh, Canadian television performance? It wasn't Canadian or French. German, German television performance. It was the what do they call it now? It was the um, the Via Satellite. Yeah. Uh, where they went on and did I. Yeah, yeah. As a three piece with yeah. Eric Carr. Yeah. That was the first one. Oh, okay. And then the second one was... Was, um, hang on. The, um, when they did the, um, fashion show? No, he was on that. Was he? Well, Tommy Thayer was on that one. This, was, this right. was before that. Oh, shit, wait a minute. Um... 
That's out of my kiss knowledge. I have no idea what the It was it was right before Ace's very last public appearance with Kiss. It was one more thing that he was supposed to be committed to, and he didn't show up. Or he was, decided he wasn't. Oh, it was. Uh, was it? They were playing like a private show on an island or something. It was in Jamaica, yeah. private show. Yeah, yeah yep. that's what. It was. That, and I get that because I didn't know. I had no idea. But. Tommy was. Um, Tommy, yeah, Tommy did end up doing it. Cause I, I remember there was another time where um, I would love to see a video of that. Oh yeah, I remember there was another time where Ace, they thought Ace wasn't going to show up, and Tommy was already in full makeup and costume yeah. ready to go on stage, and then Ace shows up. Shows up and, and wow. it's, it's, it's probably like something out of Kiss Meets the Phantom, you know? Yeah. It's <laughs> <crazy>. <laughs> I'll tell you a show I'd love to see is back when they did the special show for Honda. I think oh yeah, it, it was in Columbus. Man, I am. I kicked myself in the ass for missing that. Cause my mom worked at Honda. She there's retired bits there. and pieces of that oh. on YouTube. And I remember her mentioning it. And I, I remember I, I didn't believe her. I'm like, yeah, right. They ain't gonna have Kiss play. And right. Sure enough, I'm like, holy shit! Like I could have went to that. It was free. Oh yeah. wow, that's yeah. cool, crazy. Yeah, for all the Honda employees. But it was so, a crazy, crazy night. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the score? Uh, I have one. You have three. Okay. Okay. Here's here's one. All right. This this is probably. Uh, if you can name, just to make it easier, name two. Uh, two movies that one uh, member of Kiss. Was in trick or treat? Yeah, trick or treat, and kiss meets the Phantom of the Park. Well, that that would count. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't think about that, but yeah, that would count. Yeah. I was gonna say uh, one dead or alive. Yeah, that was but... I was I was thinking Gene, but then I thought, well, you know, uh, Peter was in that TV show Oz, but that yeah. was a movie. And then I forgot about that. Yeah, uh, oh. and you had uh, I mean trick or treat. That's, well, the that's whole... like. The whole band, I believe, was on an episode of um, what was that show? Yeah, it, it was uh, like right around the time they did Mad TV. Yeah. yeah, and they all wore makeup in one part, so they were disguised that you didn't, unless you knew that Kiss was going to be in it, you wouldn't know that. <laughs> what was the name of that show? I can't remember. Oh man, was it uh, was it Psych or? I just uh, I, I was just seeing something about that the other day too, and. I, now I can't remember. It was Psych or one of those shows that I never cared about. But yeah. <laughs> crime, crime time. Yeah. So Chad got that one. We got one more. We got uh, two that retired. We're at two. I got two. Eli has three. We're playing the five. All right. Uh, what was the first tour that uh, Paul started using his flying rig? Oh, um, yeah, when he flies out to the crowd. Un unmasked? Features? Well, as far as an official thing that he did on every show. Oh. You know, as far as, because, I mean, back in the 80s, he had like this little trapeze thing that he'd swing over the stage right. with. Yeah. And he'd go actually out on a platform like he does now. Mm -hmm. When did he first start doing that? That it was wasn't revenge, was it? I don't think it was revenge. No. That was probably God. I'd say farewell tour. Actually, if you watch the uh, Second Coming documentary, he starts doing it in the reunion tour. Okay, was Towards it on the, end, the reunion tour? Was it the Lost Cities version of the reunion tour? I would say it was. Okay, so basically, like the second part of it. Yeah, okay, <laughs> towards the end of that. Um, as far as the, uh, oh, I'd say something else and I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess neither of us got that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, we had a couple more questions. I had to go take care of some stuff. Yeah. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. <laughs> I'll take care. Who sings Wrap It Up? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous Thunder. That was on uh, Peter Chris's solo album. <laughs> <laughs> it should have been. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, what band was Eric Carr in before joining KISS? Quite a few. Yeah. What was the one that you hear about? I mean, is they... Uh, Creation, Salt and Pepper. Badlands. Who? Badlands. No, that was Eric Singer. Creation. Oh, Salt. you're saying Eric Carr. I'm sorry. I'm thinking, oh, I'm thinking Eric Carr. Uh, Salt and Pepper. Um, what I'm looking for is... The Cellarman. That's it. That's okay. One. Okay, that was like early, early. <laughs> and you're going way back. Um, okay, this one might be a little easier. Okay. Name one band that Peter Chris was in before Kids. Chelsea. Yeah. Okay. Lips. Yeah. All right, um, Eli got that round. All right, so that means next week it's me and Branton. You and Branton next week. No. Well, right. <laughs> I guess uh, I'll have to show up. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Show up with the Dukes up. The Dukes. All right, everyone. So uh, I think that's going to wrap up this episode. Uh, once again, thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks for the support. You know, yep, hit us up for the stickers. We're going to be getting those out this week. Um, again, go check out the SoundCloud page, the Facebook page, of course, YouTube, Kiss Meets Podcast. Please help spread it subscribe all that stuff uh, leave comments tell us how we're wrong on some of these answers or whatever yeah please help us out with, so. help us out with comments let help us out with your you know let us know your ranking of the 80s albums and everything so we you know we love the interaction we want we want to yeah. interact with everybody so um you guys have anything quick to wrap it up with or no for all right so that's going to do it for this week and i think we're going to get on the weekly cycle now instead of every other week because you know we all love doing this so much we can't wait so uh we will see you guys next week see ya, see ya. later <laughs>